Well, I'm back again today uh, to pick up the action. The parts have been ordered and should be arriving in my shop here in the next couple of days. So we're going to swing this action back to my shop to get started on some of the preparation to install the new parts. And uh, the first thing that we need to do, I've slid the action out of the case already. So the next thing is I need to take measurements from the action to determine the height of the bottoms of the strings from the key bed itself. And I have a special tool for doing this. This tool is probably uh, at least 80 years old. It's a, a string height gauge. It's got a little pen on it that I poke holes in a business card. And this is the way I take measurements. And you'll see how this all works to replicate these measurements when we get back into my shop. So I'm gonna start down here with this tool, place it below the first string, tighten the, the spring lock, and then I pull it out and I poke a hole in this business card. And by using this template, I can replicate the string height in my shop. So that's the first hole. The second one is the other end of the bass section. So I get that height. And usually on most pianos, the bass section, the two ends are going to be fairly close, just a couple millimeters apart. So we'll put that hole right next to the first hole. And you might be able to tell it's a tiny little bit higher there. Now we're going to move to the tenor section here. And this will be quite a bit lower because uh, in modern grands, it's what they call overstrung bass. And the bass strings are all higher above and strung across where the treble strings are. And the bass bridge is a lot higher too. You know, like almost 10 millimeters lower. And then we'll move over to the next section and do the same thing. We do this for all four sections. So there are eight measurements that I'm taking. I've done this likely hundreds of times. I have a whole stack of cards that look just like this that from every piano, at least in the last 15 years or so that I've done this with. And then we'll do the treble section last. One final measurement, and then we will take the piano action out to my van. I moved a lot of piano actions in and out of this music building over the last 25 years or so. And I found putting it on a two-wheel dolly for me is the best way to do it. Back when I was younger, I even used to carry them out by hand once in a while. But these Steinway actions are pretty heavy. They have a lot of lead in them. All right. So now I have the measurements that I need. So I'll put this card in my wallet for safekeeping. to the second session of our partial Steinway action rebuild, let me remind you that we're working on a Steinway B, a 40-year-old instrument, 42-year-old instrument, that was, uh, has been in a teaching studio at the university all these many decades. And uh, the first session, we took some parts off and got things started and took some measurements um, from the piano case. And now we've got the action here in my shop. This is the shop that I work on piano actions in a lot. And I've gotten a little start on this today. The first step when I get a piano action on my workbench is to go through the key leveling process. And with Steinway, we're not actually leveling the keys. We're arcing the keys. They're about 1 32nd of an inch higher in the middle than they are on the sides. And I have a special Steinway stick designed to do just that. So I have the piano on my bench. 
I put the stick on the piano, and I sit down and I eyeball under this stick, and for every little gap that I see where the top of the key doesn't touch the stick, I select a thickness of paper punching to put on the center rail that will move that up so that these will all be uh, properly leveled um, to the Steinway specs when we're done. And I've already taken care of all that, so the next step that we're going to go through is to remove the action stack. And to do that, I just take out these screws from the front of the action rail and the back of the action rail. I like working on Steinway actions. I've done a lot of it over the years. I always put the screws over here. I would like to put them back into the same hole that they came out of on this action rail in case there's some imperfections in there in the sizing. Alright, now one more thing with Steinways that's, that's different from most pianos is they have uh, the whole sostenuto rod is attached in a little piece called the monkey and uh, that's attached to the back of the action so we have to move that out of the way, unattach the monkey and then we can slip the whole action stack off of the key frame. I'll set this over here for now. We'll go ahead and take the key rail off too. It's the key stop rail. It keeps the keys in place when the piano is being moved around. And you can take a look at this action. You see on the back are these brass cap stands here. Those are what interface with the, uh, the abstract felt which is on the bottom of the whipping assembly. Okay, I'll take that off. And now we can uh, remove each of the keys that we've worked with, that we've noticed is too low. I'll take that key off. And on Steinways, on modern Steinways, they have something called an accelerated action bearing. This is uh, just a little piece of dowel cut in half with felt pressed over it. And that's uh, a modern innovation that they have uh, um, a patent for. So I'm putting each of these paper punchings under the accelerated action bearing. We'll put the keys back where we got them. And keep moving forward. I'm going to take all of the keys off uh, later on at a, a different point, but this is the first thing we need to do with these keys right now. And this was not too far off. This action was regulated about 20 years ago, so after 20 years of heavy play, um, the key leveling has gone off this much. A lot of them are pretty close though. And you'll notice here in the middle section you see a lot of pink and blue and green. Those are the thicker felts. So this is where the piano was played the most. Or I mean those are the thicker paper punchings. That's where the piano was played the most and that's where things compressed the most. Like this pink punching here is actually, um, what is this, uh, seven thousandths of an inch thick. See how thick that is? The green punching is five thousandths of an inch thick. This gray punching two thousandths of an inch thick. That's pretty small increments there. A lot of times when I'm in my studio doing this kind of work, I'm listening to music, a lot of times piano music. I'm listening to things I might want to play on my radio show, all things piano.
which is every Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock on our local radio station, KHOI, the heart of Iowa. And you can find that at khoifm.org on your computer. It's a very interesting radio station with a lot of really cool stuff. But my show is All Things Piano, and it's at 2 o'clock on Sunday afternoons. This is one of the very many greatly detailed uh, activities that go into high-level regulation on grand piano work. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, place the keyframe with the keys on it on my auxiliary workbench out of view here. and bring the action stack back. There are lots of things you'd like to do with the action stack when you have it off the keyframe like that. This again is the monkey. This is the sostenuto bar. This is uh, set up differently than most pianos. So the first thing that, you, that I'm going to do is uh, tighten all the screws for the whipping assemblies. These are in pretty good shape, actually. Sometimes on some pianos you'll find these to be pretty loose. My wrist and forearm has become a pretty good judge of torque over the decades. On some larger action rebuilds, these parts, the whipping assemblies, would all be removed and we would be replacing these as well but on this partial action rebuild we're not going to be replacing these parts it starts to get pretty expensive now the next thing we're going to do with this action is uh, use some uh, felt rejuvenating fluid to uh, get these um, abstract felts to pooch back out if you take a close look at this you can see there's a curve where that curves out. And on these, where they've been sitting on those cap stands on the backs of the keys, that's where that goes, like that. They've been sitting there, so over 40 years of just gravity for one, but also heavy play, these have all become indented, so they're cupped the wrong way. And um, I have a special fluid that's relatively new in the piano technician world. called VS Pro Felt, something I get from my supplier. I'm going to put some of that in each one of these abstract felt cups. It loosens up the felt fibers and allows them to go back to their original shape. Pretty good stuff. And by doing this, there are other steps of regulation that are made much uh, quicker and, and more easily accomplished. This is something you can't do with the action in the piano. It needs to be broken down on a workbench. Now that takes a few hours to settle in, so it's good to get that taken care of. <clears throat> The next thing I'm going to do, I mentioned this before, ooh, look what pops out. There's a, a flange pin out of place here on this whipping assembly. That, that's going to, that'll cause real problems later on. I'll have to take care of that. These whippings, these 42-year-old Steinway whippings have, uh, I mentioned this before, Teflon flanges in them. And Teflon flanges are a lot harder to work with than the felt flange centers like the newer whipping assemblies would have on them, the red felt flange. So with this one where the pin is all the way out, I'm going to have to work pretty hard to get that in the right spot, but that's not what we're going to do next. The next thing we're going to do is use my special spring tool to pull all of the repetition lever springs out of their slots. 
I mentioned this before too, these have a black goo on them, which is a 40 year old residue of graphite and tallow. So I can pull all these, there's a little slot that these springs ride in, I'm going to pull them all out of that little slot. So this tool is especially designed to reach right down to the right spot in the middle of the bottom of the repetition lever so that you can just pull that flange right out like that. See that black goo on there? I'm going to get that off of there. This would be the kind of thing some people might not know to do. And you know, um, not all pianos, this is something I know that you need to do on Steinways, but other, other manufacturers of repetition levers like Renner or Abel, um, they're somewhat different than this in their, the way they're constructed. Okay, we'll use a Dremel Moto tool with a little brush on it. one of those grooves. There are grooves under there that you can't see that have this black stuff on them. So I'm going to scrape underneath the inside of that to get some of that out of there. I have another type of uh, lubricant here. This is a Protec polymer lubricant that I use. I put this back on each one of those springs. Okay, and then we'll push each spring back down into its little slot. With our special heart spring tool. That's well lubricated. Nice and smooth. All right, so that's those are the steps that I do to this stack at this point. And I'm going to put a little piece of tape on here just to remind me where I stopped. Now we're going to move the stack off our workbench and put the keyframe back on it. Now I'm going to take all these keys off and I'm going to put them in a special key racks so that I can work on them a little bit more. But let me show you first. Um, these are lead weights in this key. Steinway actions, and most grand piano actions have a fair amount of lead in them, but uh, this, you know, there's, that's pretty hefty. Um, there's a lot more lead weights in the bottom end of the piano than in the top end because it's uh, weighing off uh, the, uh, the weight of the hammers to make everything even. So you want a very even touch across the whole keyboard when you're done, somewhere in the range of 50 grams of down weight. Um, but right now I'm going to step around here and get these little key holding devices that I made decades ago and I've been using ever since. We'll just set them over here for now. <clears throat>
40 years of accumulated dust, little pieces of paper. I find all sorts of things in pianos. Sometimes they're usually down in the case. Okay, get some of that dirt out of there. this back rail felt just a little bit too with a wire brush. Don't poke yourself with those wires. And now The next thing I do is I put a little bit of Protec lube on each one of these pins, the front rail pins and the center rail pins, and that just helps things ride more easily. And a lot of times, uh, um, in a lot of settings, there might be more corrosion on these, depending on the life the piano is seen. These don't look too corroded, but I did notice as I was pulling the keys off that, uh, that they were not sliding up and down on those pins quite as nicely as I wanted them to. So I'm going to take a little of this. I have a hole drilled in this piece of felt here. I force some of this down into it. And then put a little bit on the tip of each one. I go back over these two or three times to. Get it pretty evenly coated. It doesn't take a lot. It just uh, makes things go more smoothly. All these little things add up to a smooth feeling action, which is what we want. Now, I'm going to move this back to an auxiliary position, and we'll move back over to our workbench here, and I'm going to put the keys into our keyframes base. That's about half of them there. These are the center rail bushings, and these don't wear nearly as much. Um, in extended use as the front rail bushings do. So our main task right now is going to be working on these front rail bushings. These bushings right here, and if you take a close look, they're not too bad, but uh, this, they use such quality materials in Steinway that a lot of th th times things don't wear out as much as they might otherwise. But uh, the thing that I would will do with uh, most grand actions I work on at this point is take a micrometer reading off the front rail pin. Now, I didn't do this over here, but uh, it's not that important to see that, I don't think. Okay, so I take a micrometer reading off the pin, and that would determine what size of brass call I'm going to use. These front rail bushings are a little bit worn, and we noted earlier that, uh, that there was a little bit of too much side play, and also that it was a little unequal. Some of the pianos had, or some of the keys had more side play than others. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some rejuvenating fluid on each one of those and we're going to size them. And I have some brass calls here. These are very precisely machined to be 147 one thousandths of an inch wide at the bottom. And that's the exact width that you want the, the felt to be so that it will ride up and down uh, very easily on those front rail um, pins. So what I'm going to do with these brass calls, put them in a frying pan, 
a saucepan and I'm going to heat them up on this iron over here. They actually get pretty hot if you're not careful. I'll go ahead and get these other keys going here. And we have all 88 keys sitting right here. And I'm going to use, again, VS Pro Felt on these to relax those felt fibers and allow these to, uh, the felt, to kind of swing back to its original um, density and, um, and size. Well, I heat those brass calls because um, heating this liquid up while it's uh, being absorbed by the fibers um, allows those fibers to relax that much more and um, become really precisely the right size for these front rail pins on a Steinway grand piano. And all Steinway front rail pins are the same size. And I do a lot more Steinways than anything else, too. And I used to replace the, this felt a lot more frequently than I do now um, before we had this modern technique of, uh, of using this VS Pro Felt, this felt rejuvenating liquid and sizing calls. All right, well now we have uh, got our VS Pro Felt in all of the front rail felt here and I've heated up our brass calls so now I'm going to go ahead and put the brass calls in, and I've learned over the years that these sometimes get pretty hot, so I oftentimes wear a glove, at least part of the time. I'll start down here. Ouch! Those are hot. We'll just insert them, and um, with that, the heat in there, these will cool. They're slightly enlarged because they're hot, but they'll cool. And as they cool, the, the size, the sizing of the felt is just so smooth and so good. I was really happy when I found out about this method here several years ago. And I think the players that play these pianos are very happy about it, too. Yeah, this felt's all in, in great shape once you put some of that protect on there. Great. Keys are done. So these brass calls, uh, I heat them up and use them to size the piano uh, front rail bushings so that they will be just the right size. And this one actually slipped down in there. That's not good. I might have to rebush that one. We'll see if we can get this to stick. And we'll check it later. Keep an eye on it. All right. Okay, so I'm done with these keys, and now I'm going to move these keys uh, somewhere else, like maybe right over here. So we'll bring the step back over here. And for this, I use an electric screwdriver. Now, these hammers on the end of each section, I've put on there as placeholders, because uh, these, the end of each section was already sent off to our parts supplier um, to have the new parts prepared for this. So these are placeholders off an old Steinway B that I rebuilt the action to last year. <clears throat> so I'm going to leave the end hammers from each section on. We're going to remove all the other hammers, because all these hammers, shanks, and flanges are going to be replaced. And it's always interesting to take these parts off of a 40-year-old piano like this, a 40-year-old Steinway. And what do you do with these old piano parts? I, I've had... I've, I've had shelves lined with boxes full of old action parts at various times, and uh, 
a couple of years ago, we had a big meeting of the Piano Technicians Guild here at my house, and I was able to give a lot of those boxes of parts away to younger technicians, and you wonder what they're going to do with them. But it's nice to have spare parts around, a few spare parts. You just don't want too many of them. Well, it's been great having you here in the shop with me today. We've had a chance to do the first half of the piano restoration of this action that we're going to accomplish. We got the keys leveled. We got the keyframe lubed, we rejuvenated the abstract felt, we have the front rail bushings uh, rejuvenated on those keys. That's all good stuff to have done. We've removed the hammers, well, we're still removing the hammers, but we've removed the hammers from the old action and gotten it ready to put uh, the new parts on. And the other thing that I forgot to mention is we got those uh, repetition lever springs out of the repetition levers, buffed up, cleaned, and some new lube put in those slots. So this action will be ready to go. We'll finish up putting the new hammers on with their new shanks and flanges and do the basic regulation of this action here in the shop next time. We have the measurements we took from the studio piano and we can replicate that pretty closely right here on this workbench. And then we'll put the action back in in our last episode, do the final regulation, work on the pedals, Tune that piano up and boy will it sound and play nice.